We just returned from our first trip back to the United States since moving to the Netherlands. And we're going to tell you about this little thing called reverse culture shock. Reverse culture shock is defined as readjusting the previously familiar surroundings, disorientation, irritability, restlessness, depression. Yep, you name it. We got it. And we're here to talk about it. Oh, and we're ready to answer the probably obvious question. Are we ready to move back to the U.S. now? We're Michelle and Alex. In the summer of 2022, we packed up our lives and moved ourselves and our two cats to the Netherlands. And since then, we've been exploring all of the things the Netherlands has to offer, from its beautiful cities to its amazing food. And about a week ago, we participated in an annual tradition here in the Netherlands, the New Year's Dive or New Year's Dau, completely naked. Goedemorgen and welcome back. Today, we're talking about a recent trip back to the US, specifically the things that surprised us after not being there for about two years. Number eight. Let's start with the one that might be obvious. Grocery stores in the United States are massive. Say nothing of Costco or other warehouse club type stores, which we didn't really use when we lived in the United States, and we certainly didn't visit on this most recent trip. But grocery stores in the United States are massive with a huge selection and a lot of parking. For context, here's the cereal aisle. Let's say I'm looking for Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which is an incredible cereal, by the way. Well, first, I need to find it in this massive two-sided aisle. Okay, here it is, in three sizes, regular, large, and giant size. There are also a few other variations of the classic Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Rolls, Tres Leches Toast Crunch, and Minis. Oh, look, there's another option, Cinnamon Toast Crunch in a bag. Now, here's a cereal aisle in the Netherlands. If you could call it that. This might not be a great comparison since I don't think cereal is as popular here, so let's maybe compare the cheese selection. Here's the cheese section in the Netherlands. There's not a ton of variety here. For that, you'll typically need to go to a cheese shop. Here's the cheese section in the US. Oh, and here's the specialty cheese section that's also in most American grocery stores. We walked into the grocery store and it was just, it was overwhelming. Yeah, getting just into the parking lot was crazy too. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven, the grocery stores in the U.S. were a lot pricier than we remembered. First, you might already know that the price that you see on the tag at the store in the United States isn't necessarily the price you pay on checking out, unlike here in the Netherlands, where the price that you pay is the price on the tag with VAT or tax included. But like all taxes in the U.S., everything is dependent on the state that you're in or even in some cases, the city or the county. There are 13 states that tax grocery items, but thankfully, Ohio is not one of them. So when you buy a cucumber, at least the tag is what you'll actually end up paying. But still, you can see on this receipt, there are some things that are taxed and it isn't necessarily clear if it's taxed or not until after you check out. Things like aluminum foil or cat food. There is still a major difference in the prices of items in the grocery store in the US versus the Netherlands. Let's start with comparing a simple cucumber. Here's how a cucumber is tagged in the US and here's how it's priced here at our local Albert Heijn. Now, bread is a bit interesting. As y'all might know, bread in the United States tends to be filled with preservatives, so it typically looks like this. And this loaf of bread costs $3.49. But if you look at the bread in the bakery section at the grocery store, it looks like this, and it costs $4.49. But here's a full loaf of bread at our local Albert Heijn. It's $1.99. And finally, meat replacement products like this fake chicken. Here's a brand that's available in the US, and here's a somewhat comparable house brand in the Netherlands. One of the things that I thought was really interesting is that in the United States, none of the meat replacement products are house brand or grocery store brand. And that's really common here in the Netherlands, like Yumbo and Albert Hein all have their own house brand for meat replacements. Yeah. And we were shopping at Kroger and they have a pretty prominent Simple Truth brand for things like that. And I was surprised that they didn't, I didn't see anything that was Simple Truth branded that was a, like a meat replacement product. Nope. It's all name brand, which means it's kind of expensive. Another probably more obvious Didn't one. Say number six. Oops. Number six. Another probably obvious one. The first thing that we did when we got to the US was we picked up our rental car. You really can't get around in the US without a car. I mean, you probably could if you lived in one of the larger cities, but in Cincinnati, there's only buses and then one route of a streetcar. The services there are really more aimed at getting people around downtown and then getting them to downtown. Let's just start by going through what the commute looks like from the airport in Cincinnati to where we stayed on our trip, which was Michelle's mom's house. It's about an hour of a drive, so 45 minutes to an hour, somewhere around that. But if you look at how to get there from public transit, it would take three and a half hours and it would require three bus transfers. And even if you did the bus transfers, I mean, 
you still have a 22 minute walk at the end of it. It's not terrible, but like it's a 45 minute drive versus a three and a half hour series of buses. Oh my God. Not great. Now, I think this might be the most ridiculous one. This is how to get from the Starbucks that's close to my mom's house to my mom's house. Now, it's a five minute drive or a 57 minute walk or an 18 minute bike ride. And you might be looking at this and being like, oh, well, an 18 minute bike ride, that's not so bad. However, I don't know how these walking directions even exist because if you go on street view and you go right here to this bridge, you can see that no one's gonna walk on this. It's a, a shoulder. And there's a no walking sign even at the intersection over here that says that you can't walk on this bridge. It's not something that you would want to look at this. You wouldn't want to bike. You wouldn't want to walk on this. Certainly. This is like a 50 mile an hour road. Yeah, that's why we're showing you these pictures. And we didn't actually attempt this when we were home because we might be dead. Well, it says not to. It, yeah. There's literally <laughs> a no walking sign on this street. I don't know why Google is telling me to do it, but it's uh, not recommended. Do you remember how much gas we used on that trip? Um, like two full tanks of gas. My mom lives on like the northeast side of Cincinnati. Her mom lives on the northwest side of Cincinnati. And we had dinner with friends. And of course, they were close to the city of Cincinnati. So there was a lot of driving and it took up a lot of our time. And honestly, my butt kind of hurt after the end of that trip. Every single drive was a minimum of 30 minutes. It must have been really boring for you because at least for me, I was driving. Yeah, I didn't drive at all. I was like gung ho in the beginning. I was like, I'm going to drive. And then we got into it and I was like, I'm not driving. Anymore. Yeah, driving sucks. Number five, people working in service jobs in the U.S. are so dang friendly. Or maybe another way to say this is that people in the U.S. love small talk. Of course, that's not to say people in the Netherlands aren't friendly. It's just that people in the US are generally so talkative. And we knew that going in, but people were still just a lot friendlier than we were expecting. I don't know. Does that make sense? Anyway, this started immediately. The morning after we arrived, we got up and we went to breakfast at, ironically, this place in Cincinnati called Taste of Belgium. And the server was so friendly and she ended up telling us about how her family actually had some Dutch heritage. And when we were leaving, we cracked jokes with the Delta check-in agent and the lady inside the airport store asked us where we were going and why we were flying to Paris. And I just felt like we rarely have these types of interactions with service workers here in the Netherlands. And I don't think that's necessarily a good or a bad thing. It's just different. Number four, I was shocked by how out of control tipping has become. It's common knowledge that tipping is sort of common in the United States, especially for people like your wait staff, your hairstylist, or when you get food delivered. But in the past few years, it seems like tipping's really gotten out of control. Contrast that with the Netherlands are really most countries where tipping is extremely uncommon. You do see it pop up occasionally, especially in like touristy areas, but it's never really expected. And in our experience, it's not really frequently done. The only time I can really think of even being prompted to tip here in the Netherlands is when we occasionally take an Uber or if we get food delivered. And in that case, the amount is significantly lower, usually somewhere between 5 and 15%. Whereas in the United States, the expectation is almost always 20% minimum. And in some cases, the prompt that shows the tip values after you complete your transaction even shows you a lot higher. Yes, percentages. sometimes I've heard they start at 20%. Yeah. And then it's like 22, 25. Yeah, 30. Crazy. At our favorite restaurant in Rotterdam, Bro e Salvia, a dinner with Two entrees, a glass of wine, and appetizer cost somewhere around 50 euros. And an equivalent meal that we had in Cincinnati cost us around $80 with tip, which is almost double. At the end of the day, I believe that these servers should get paid a fair wage. And tipping is part of that because they don't get paid normal minimum wage in the US. They get paid something ridiculously low. Yeah, it's like $2.30 an yeah, hour. Yeah, like tipping is a component of their pay. But that's not right. Like... I don't know. I don't know if I'm complaining about the prices at restaurants or if I'm complaining about tipping culture, but something needs to change. Number three, speaking of restaurants, we forgot about one more thing that's a difference with service. In the Netherlands, once you've ordered your food and drinks, you've essentially finished your transaction with the wait staff. I mean, of course, they bring you your food and drinks, but if you want to get something else or once you're ready to pay the bill, you have to call them back over. In the US, the wait staff is constantly checking on you. And when they see that you're done eating, they swoop in, take your stuff and hand you the check. It is friendlier service in some ways, since you don't have that awkward hand wavy thing that you have to do to get the attention of the wait staff here in the Netherlands. Make but, eye contact. Yes, exactly. But it's also very much like a get in, get out type of thing. I'm not really sure which one that I prefer. What do you all think? Let us know in the comments. 
It was really strange how when we were at Taste of Belgium, we were there for maybe like 30 minutes. And I think the waitress outside of our like banter with her probably asked us if we wanted more coffee like three times. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. He wanted it all three times. That's true. It was different. But that's how we got to know her. Yeah. Number two. So obviously on this trip, we didn't experience the air conditioning that's so common in the US. It was December and it was cold. In Ohio, we generally have cold, sometimes snowy winters and very humid summers. However, we did experience central heating, which is a hot, dry air that blows through vents from a furnace instead of it coming from radiators or up from floors, which is generally what we see or feel here in the Netherlands. I feel like we have to mention this one, but the bigger shock to me was the lack of fresh air. In the Netherlands, ventilation is just really common here. Either there's like always a window cracked, there's vents actually in your windows, or in fancier homes, there's some sort of centralized ventilation system. In the US, it's all done by your central heating and air conditioning, and it does pull in air from the outside, but man, it just feels really different. In the Netherlands, it kind of feels like we always have a window open, which is really nice. I actually really, really felt this one. It was really dry in your mom's house. Yeah. You know, no hate. You know, it was a great place to stay. It was very comfortable. But I just don't think I fully appreciated how much we can manage the humidity levels in our homes here. Just by opening a vent or by opening a window for a period of time, they are... I mean, I don't even think we we were staying in our basement. There was no window to open. Nope, we couldn't open a window if so we wanted to. It was just all to. dry air. Yeah. We had to bring in a humidifier. Number one. Here's one that we experienced as we were planning to leave and for the entire time that we were there. We were terrified of having to use the U.S. healthcare system. In the Netherlands, our healthcare plan here will cover the cost of emergency healthcare that we need when we're traveling. However, it's only up to the cost of an equivalent service in the Netherlands. And like I mentioned in our vlog about buying our bikes in the Netherlands, I broke my hip on a bike in 2013. And at the time, I was actually covered by my employer's healthcare plan. I remember receiving the bills, which literally came for months after I left the hospital. And I swear, I don't have the statements anymore, but one of them was for well over $60,000. That was just for one of them. That was the pre-insurance amount, which is still absolutely crazy. That's basically what I would be paying if I was uninsured in the United States right now. I don't have American healthcare insurance. So it would just be $60,000 minus the equivalent urgent healthcare service in the Netherlands, which would probably still be quite a lot of money. Oh, yeah. That would also be the same price for one of the people that are underinsured or uninsured in the United States, people who just can't afford their health insurance premiums. And by the way, as a self-employed individual here in the Netherlands, the amount of money that I pay for my healthcare here is equivalent to what I was paying in the United States as my share of the healthcare plan through my employer. But the deductible in the United States was $2,000 or more, whereas here in the Netherlands, it's like 385 euros. So that's how I ended up paying over $2,000 when I broke my hip. So yeah, that's something that really weighs on you when you're traveling back to the United States. And In the end, we decided not to get supplemental insurance for the trip, but honestly, that was a really tough decision for us. So no, we're not moving back to the US anytime soon. We'll stay in the Netherlands as long as the Netherlands will have us. We post new videos every week, so if you want to see videos of us exploring the Netherlands, be sure to subscribe. That tells YouTube to get our videos from us to you. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all next week. Tot dan! I almost missed that one.